Oh, I didn't see you guys in there. I was coming in here to get this grinder tube. We're gonna start making some brats. Stay tuned. All right, we're back in the kitchen today. I've got my uh, grinder parts out here in front of me. This is the LEM Big Bite. We're gonna be putting this together and we're gonna be grinding up some venison to make into some brats here today. I've got the venison out of the freezer, trimmed up. I've got some pork um, mixins in with it. I wasn't able to find any pork fat, or just straight fat locally, so I ended up getting a pork butt roast, and it looks like it's gonna turn out pretty darn good. So this is the small plate we're putting on there. That's all I use when I grind. Um, as you can see, this grinder tube is frosted up. I had it in the freezer for about 45 minutes beforehand. And we should be good to go. All right, so what I got in here, it's about a 60-40 mix. This is trimmed up venison, partially frozen, and this is some uh, pork roast, uh, pretty high fat cap on there. So it should work is the only thing I could find locally at the moment when the meat was ready to be pulled out of the freezer. But straight pork trim or pork fat will do you just fine too. For the seasoning, we are using the Back 40 Bratwurst. This is for fresh sausage. Cook thoroughly before consuming. Um, so this, I am gonna smoke them um, and then just have them ready to reheat. So here's my grinder all set up. I do have the foot pedal. So we can control it like that. So I'm gonna load the hopper up and we're gonna start going. Depending upon what kind of grinder you have, you might have to trim your, uh, your meat smaller. Um, this grinder here can take some pretty large chunks of meat. All right, so I'm gonna do it a little different here today than they recommend on the package. On the package they say coarse grind, mix your seasoning packets in, and then grind again. I'm just gonna do one grind because I usually can get away with that. Um, this is for 25 pounds of meat, which I think is about what we have. I'm just sort of eyeballing it because there isn't a cure period um, for fresh sausage. So that means there isn't any cure in it. So the only thing that really will be affected if I'm off a little bit on my guess will be the, the taste, but it should be fine. So we're gonna grab this over here and just give this a little mix in. Just sort of get this turned in here a little bit. And by doing it this way, I'm going to grind in and then I'll mix it again when it's in the tub. What I'll do at the end is I'll throw my little bit of cold water into this tub, get the seasoning out, and then uh, do it like that so that I'm not losing a bunch of seasoning. I don't know if it's the way to do it, but it's the way I'm trying it today. I like to sort of experiment and see how it goes. All right, so I did a bit of a clean up. I had this chilling outside. It's currently 18 degrees out, so I was cooling that off. Um, the recipe calls for two to three cups of water added into it, so we're gonna do that. I'm 
on. I'm just going to wash my hands off quick and dive right in there and start mixing it. It's going to be really cold. But I'm just going to start mixing this all together. Yep, that's really cold. I'm trying to get that fat venison pork mixture all sort of bound together. Hopefully you guys can see what the world I'm doing here. Yeah, that's like hurts your hands cold. We're just kneading all this together. I got my stuffer set up on the end of the counter there. Wow! Yeah, that's plenty cold. When you're working meat, grinding it and stuffing it and stuff, you want to keep it cold. Prevents bacteria growth. Helps stuff it. Whew. Yeah, I mean, it burns my hands. So I'm going to mix this up a little bit, warm my hands up a couple times, and I'll show you guys over on the stuff or what I got going on. Just taking a look here at these casing directions, and it says uh, rinse salt from casing, soak 40 for 50 minutes, then rinse again. So, I guess we're gonna do that. These are just the casings that came in that Fleet Farm brand. So, I guess we're gonna do that, put the meat back outside, then get to it. Alright, so I just got one set stuffed up. I just wanted to take a test run before I turn you guys on because it's been a minute since I've done this make sure I remember what I was doing so I'm just backing my stuff off now and fill it up this is about half full right now so I got my big toe of meat over here it's nice and cold just gonna pack it in there the less air you get in there the better product you're gonna get and this is just like a five pound packer you maybe get four pounds of meat in there if that I need to upgrade to a bigger one so I got that packed full left a little bit of room I'm gonna rinse my hands off quick I'm sorry I got this all set up right in the zone here so I'm gonna pop that in there rock our stuffer down until it starts so I got these casings, I sort of got them all untangled. I got the one side knotted. And then you sort of gotta wrestle with this side a little bit and find the opening. If you find the opening, just slide around there and start working it back onto the horn of your stuffer. And these have been soaked per instructions. So you work it all the way back to where the knot is and then with one hand you hold onto this and the other hand you just sort of slowly start cranking and you just gotta sort of play it by ear on how they stuff, whether you gotta work it forward or whether it will slide off. With these natural casings it's a little bit trickier than like say a summer sausage casing. So I'm getting a pretty even stuff. You pretty much want to fill it up almost all the way, not too tight because you don't want to be able to twist them. And you'll want to be able to tie the end off. One of these casings, oops, does about of the stuffer it seems like. I'm getting towards the end. Pay attention to how much casing we have left. This one's longer than the last one. So right about there, I'm gonna stop. Spin your spin, spin your crank backwards so that your meat quits coming out. And then I just 
twist up your the end. Just simply put an overhand knot in it. I'm going to be smoking these on a grate in a vertical smoker, so I'm not going to be hanging them, so I'm just going to twist them sort of into a circle. same size but I don't really care you can measure them or whatnot if you wanted to but that's one ring so I'm gonna just keep going until I get all my rings twisted up here So I'm out here at the smoker. It's the later the next day. Watch out, dog. Get out of the way. It's hot. So I got all my brats out of the fridge and we're gonna load them up into the smoker. The dog doesn't eat them from me. Um, we're gonna smoke them at about 225, 240 for as long as they take to get to their temperature. If you want to smoke them to about 150 and pull them and rise and you want to be target temperature 160 or 165 ish depending upon who you talk to or what resource I think the US food USDA food says 165 for pork which is what we're going at so I'm gonna load these up and we're gonna get them rolling. It's gonna be a snug fit to get them all in here, but we should fit most of them at least. but two rounds in I am smoking with apple wood get out of there dog so we're gonna throw a couple chunks in there and we're gonna let it start rolling This one set at about medium. It's going to take a while for that meat to get heated up. I got to run to the store, grab a thermometer, and then I'll be back to check on these. Well, I just got them all off the smoker. I left you guys in here because it was dark out. But they all turned out pretty good. I checked that internal temperature of 160, and they all pretty much had reached that. So they should be safe to reheat and fire away. 
Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video of me making some fresh smoked venison brats. Hopefully you found it informative for you to go on your own endeavor of making yourself some sausage out of your harvests. Thanks for watching. We got a lot more stuff coming to you. Be sure to subscribe and hit the like button.